Welcome everyone to my online course for research methods in psychology. My name is Frank Lociavo and I am your instructor. I have several interesting things to discuss with you, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. In the last video, we discussed how to evaluate frequency claims. And you might recall that frequency claims describe outcome data for one single individual variable. One single individual variable. Association claims are fundamentally different, so it's easy to distinguish association claims from frequency claims. Association claims typically emerge from correlational research studies, where two or more variables are measured, two or more variables. So, in this video, I'll discuss how we can ask several targeted questions to assess or interrogate the validity of association claims. Along the way, we'll assess an association claim's external validity, statistical validity, and construct validity. As I've mentioned previously, internal validity typically applies to causal claims only. In other words, internal validity does not typically apply to association claims, and association claims are the subject of this video. All right, let's get to work. Hey, here's another brief reminder of the four validities with brief descriptions of each. If necessary, pause the video so you can review them. And as you wrestle with making sense of these validities, it might be helpful to remember them in this order. Internal external statistical construct. Based on the first letters of each, that's IESC. 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 If that memorization strategy works for you, use it. Otherwise, try something else. All right, let's go ahead and discuss how to interrogate association claims. Association claims are all about links between variables. When we discover that two variables are linked or associated, we gain quite a bit of additional information about each variable. Consider the following association claim, which was mentioned in an online article at Forbes.com. New study links exercise to higher pay. The article describes a positive correlation between a person's exercise habits and their salary. Well, you might recall I mentioned previously that when two variables are associated, to some extent we can predict one variable from the other. In this case, if the two variables are positively associated, then we can predict that employees who exercise earn higher salaries than employees who do not exercise. Of course, our predictions will be more accurate if the two variables are strongly correlated, but less accurate if the two variables are correlated weakly. So let's go ahead and look into this association claim more closely. In other words, let's interrogate this claim by assessing each of the key validities we discussed previously. I'd like to interrogate this particular claim two different ways, and I think you'll learn a lot in the process. First, let's interrogate this claim using what I'm going to call the quick and easy method. We need to find the article where the claim was mentioned. So I googled the headline, and one of the first hits took me to Forbes.com. Here's the article. It's very short, just six brief paragraphs. The quick and easy method that we're going to use to interrogate the validity of this claim involves using information from this article only. Because, let's be honest, you often come across short articles like this, you read about a research claim, and then you move on with your life. You don't always have the time or the motivation to seek further information. And we need to be fair with this brief article. This Forbes article is not a research report. It's just an article from an online magazine that mentions a research report. In fact, the Forbes article mentions that the original research was published in the Journal of Labor Research. Okay, let's dive in. We'll start at the top of the table with construct validity. We need to ask ourselves how well have the researchers measured the variables in question. Association claims focus on two or more variables. In this case, the claim mentions an association between exercise and pay. To assess how well those conceptual variables were measured, we need to know how they were operationally defined. In other words, how exactly did the researchers measure how often or how much the research subjects exercise? And how exactly did the researchers measure pay? 
Unfortunately, this brief article doesn't provide either of those details. So, based on the Forbes article alone, the construct validity of this association claim is questionable. Based on the Forbes article alone, we don't have enough information to understand how the researchers measured exercise and earnings. Next, let's assess the statistical validity of this association claim. To assess statistical validity, it would be helpful to know the effect size. In other words, how strong is the association between exercise and earnings? According to the Forbes article, the study shows that employees who exercise earn approximately 9% more than those who do not. It would be helpful to have some additional statistical information as well, such as a confidence interval around that 9% estimate, just to help us get a sense of how precise that 9% estimate is. But the information reported is a reasonable start. At least it gives us an idea of how much earnings differ between those who exercise and those who do not. It's not necessarily an enormous difference, but I'm sure each of us would appreciate a 9% raise. So, based on the Forbes article alone, the statistical validity of this association claim appears reasonable. Additional statistical information would have been helpful, but the article provides a good idea of the effect size, and that's a great start. We don't typically need to worry about internal validity for association claims. Association claims typically emerge from correlational research, and as you know, correlational research can't prove causation. The Forbes article doesn't make any causal claims. For example, the Forbes article doesn't imply that exercise causes pay increases, or that more exercise leads to pay increases. The article simply states that the two variables are linked or associated, and those are appropriate ways to describe association claims. So, let's move on. To assess external validity, or generalizability, we need to know about the research subjects. Where are they from? What kinds of jobs do they have? How are they selected for this research study? Unfortunately, this brief article doesn't provide any of those details. So, based on the Forbes article alone, the external validity of this association claim is questionable. Based on the Forbes article alone, we don't have enough information to understand how the results would generalize to other people or to other work-related situations. So, let's assess the overall validity of this association claim. Although the statistical validity met our minimum requirements, the Forbes article didn't provide enough information for us to have confidence in the association claim's external validity or construct validity. So, overall, I can't vouch for this claim. I can't support this claim. Unfortunately, the Forbes article didn't provide me with enough information to verify that the claim is reasonable. It didn't provide me with enough information to verify that the claim is appropriate. Sometimes life forces us to interrogate claims based on that quick and easy method. That's fine, such as when you're just reading for pleasure, or when you're reading just to kill some time. But life can't always be quick and easy, right? For instance, it's possible that you might come upon this headline, and then read this Forbes article, and then decide to take action. For example, you might decide to share this article with your boss at work, or you might design a new exercise program, hoping that your employees will become more successful, more profitable, and better paid as a result. Well, before hitting that share button, and before implementing new programs, it would be wise to investigate this association claim more closely. A more thorough investigation won't be quick, and it might not be easy, but your efforts will help you make more informed decisions regarding the link between exercise and earnings. So, let's look into this association claim more appropriately. The Forbes article mentioned that the original research report was published in the Journal of Labor Research. So, I googled the journal name, I found the journal's website, I found the original article, and then I opened the PDF. The article was hidden behind a paywall, but I was able to use my Ohio University login credentials to gain access. 
Right from the top, there are a few interesting things to note. First, we can see that the journal article is 25 pages long. The entire Forbes article had just six short paragraphs. So we're going to find much more detail within this original research report. Another thing I noticed right here in the abstract is that the author uses language that suggests a causal relationship between exercise and earnings. For example, the abstract states that the article investigates whether exercise leads to higher earnings. We'll come back to that issue as we move along. We'll start at the top of the table with construct validity. Like before, we need to ask ourselves, how well have the researchers measured the variables in question? According to the article, all the data came from a prior survey known as the National Longitudinal Survey of Youth. In other words, the author of this article didn't collect any data himself. He used archival data that existed already. That's fine, and it's common in research and economics, but that's an important detail for a variety of reasons. For example, if the author of this article wasn't involved in any of the data collection, we know for certain that his research was simply correlational, as we suspected, and absolutely not experimental. Experimental research requires at least one variable to be manipulated, and that's not possible when relying solely on data that's been collected already. And if the research wasn't experimental, then it's best to avoid using any causal language in the research report. So, how did the survey measure exercise? In the methods section, I found that respondents were asked, how often do you participate in vigorous physical exercise, such as aerobics, running, swimming, or bicycling? The responses were placed into categories, such as never, one to three times each month, etc. The research report didn't provide any additional information, but it stated that several questions were asked about physical activities. Although I'd prefer to see more detail regarding all the ways exercise was measured, it appears that it was measured appropriately. Oddly enough, the research report didn't include much detail regarding how income was measured. From what I can tell, respondents were simply asked to report their average weekly income. That's reasonable. So, generally speaking, I think both variables were measured appropriately, and that based on this journal article, the construct validity of the association claim is acceptable. Next, let's assess statistical validity. The article features some relatively advanced statistical techniques, so the results section is somewhat complicated. But let's try to simplify things. The association claim stated that a new study links exercise to higher pay. What statistical evidence supports that claim? Table 2 provides some relatively straightforward evidence. The first row shows weekly income across different levels of exercise frequency. As you can see, there's a clear trend such that more frequent exercise is associated with higher wages. You might recall the Forbes article mentioning that employees who exercise earn approximately 9% more than those who do not. That conclusion was probably cherry-picked from this sentence in the results section. The sentence describes two different analyses, one showing an 8% difference and the other showing a 10% difference, which is statistically significant. So, based on the extensive details provided in the journal article, the statistical validity of the association claim is acceptable. As you know, we don't typically worry about internal validity for association claims. That's because most researchers don't overstep their bounds, suggesting that correlational results imply causal relationships. I'm not necessarily saying this author overstepped his bounds, but no matter how much he wants to present the results as though one group received a treatment, exercise, and the other group did not, that's not how the study was designed. Ultimately, the author's analyses were based on survey data, on a correlational research design. But only experimental designs have sufficient internal validity to support causal claims. Let me try to be crystal clear here. It's absolutely fine to state that this study links, links, exercise to higher pay. 
but it crosses the line to say more exercise leads to higher pay. That subtle change of phrasing would shift the association claim at the top of this slide to a causal claim, and that would be inappropriate. Let's wrap up this intensive interrogation by assessing the external validity or generalizability of this association claim. To assess external validity, we need to know about the research subjects so we can assess who they might represent. If they represent a large, diverse group of people, then we can generalize the results of the study to large groups of diverse people, but that's not always the case. As we've learned, this research is based on archival data from a survey known as the National Longitudinal Survey of Youth. According to the journal article, the survey began with a sample of over 12,000 respondents. That's a large sample size. The data for the study was collected when the respondents ranged in age from 33 to 41 years old. From this table of summary statistics, we can see that the average age was 38 years old. They had been working at their job for about six years on average, although it's not clear what types of jobs they had. About 49% of the respondents were female, about 28% black, and about 18% Hispanic. Based on that data, we can't conclude that the sample represents the entire American workforce, but the sample size is large. Males and females are represented, and furthermore, white people, black people, and Hispanic people are represented. So perhaps it's appropriate to generalize the results to those groups of American workers, particularly those in their 30s and low 40s. That's not so bad. Not every research study can represent our entire society. So although I wish the sample included data from older and younger workers, I think the external validity of this association claim is generally acceptable. Let's assess the overall validity of this claim. The construct validity, the statistical validity, and the external validity are all acceptable. Unlike the Forbes article, which didn't provide much detail, the original article published in the Journal of Labor Research provided sufficient information to verify that the claim is appropriate. In fact, the claim might begin to tell us something really interesting about the relationship between exercise and income. Well, that's it for this section, but stay tuned because I'll have more to say about research methods in the next video.